Hey boys and girls, thank you for joining us once again for Sunday School. Now then, it wouldn't be Sunday School with it without a challenge. Mm, so today we're going to start off with a Sean versus Beth challenge and it's going to be a singing challenge. Now it's a really hot day today so it's very important that we stay hydrated, especially for singing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it in turn uh, to sing a song but you've got to keep the water in your mouth and gargle the tune. Mm. So you can see if you can guess at home, boys and girls, we're going to do three rounds and one go each. And we're going to guess each other's and you can see if you can guess them as well. Okay? That you sounds ready? like fun. Yeah. So the first round is the pop song round. So Beth, you're going to go first. Yeah. Okay. So think about a famous pop song. You will have heard of this song, I'm sure. Um, Ed Sheeran, mm. um, Evergreen, no. Oh, is it? Um, you might have got it home. I think it's Taylor Swift. Shake it. It is, it it is off. Taylor Swift. Shake it off. Well done, Fab. you got it. Good well job. done, Beth. It's your turn. Um, Here's your drink. Right, next one for me now. Okay, so, so still in the pop round, so I've got a guess this time. You see if you can guess as well. More water. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I think I know. <laughs> Did you get that at home? I think it is George Ezra shotgun. Spot on. Well done. Well okay, the next round is going to be movie round. And you're going to go first, aren't you, Beth? Mm -hmm. and you're going to think of a song from a movie. No, I'll give you a clue. This is a Disney uh, movie, isn't it, Beth? That's well, the clue you to, gave. Yeah, we're going to go me. with Disney films, okay? Fab. So the first one. This is mine. Aladdin? No, okay. <laughs> Toy Story. Oh, is it? Um, is it Moana? Mm. There we are. We saw that film a few weeks ago. We didn't did, we, yeah, we enjoyed Fab. it. Well done. Yes, okay, so next one for me. This is a really famous film. Okay. Have I seen it? <laughs> Do you do these? No. <clears throat> um, I, I can't really do much more than that, to be honest. Um, what do you, do you guys know? think at home? Any ideas? Well, I'll tell you that it was Star Wars. Oh, I haven't seen it. That's mm. fine. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, the last round is player's choice, this is where Beth will choose a song that is really important to her, mm. and then I'll do the same after her, so it's the last round. Well done if okay. you've got a few right so far. It's going to choose our own song yeah. this time. Okay, so I'm going to choose something that we do in church, so see if you can... Uh, well, like a worship song. song. A worship song. <clears throat> Oh. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. That one, yeah? That's the one, yeah. Wow. Every giant will fall. Well, well done, you got it. Maybe you could do that in church next time. I think Maybe. it sounds really good when you gargle. Good idea. Um, okay, last one for me then. And this is a very famous song. You will definitely have heard of this song. Um, one of your favourites. Yeah. It? <laughs> More water. <laughs> Is it? Um, I'll do one more. Justin Bieber? Mm -mm. 
Sheeran? I'll do one more. <clears throat> Are you getting this at home? I give up. I have no, no idea. It was, um, did you get it at home? It's, it was Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. I mean, mm. have you not heard that one before? Oh, okay. Well, it's my favourite song, so... Well, anyway, um, great job with the guests, and guys, hope you uh, enjoy that little challenge there. And, um, well done. Maybe you could have a go at gargling at home, and maybe have a game with your family, maybe with your parents It's good fun. We'll see you in a sec for today's story. Fab. See you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that challenge, and today our story is going to be from the Book of Acts. And this is the book that happened straight after the Gospels, where Jesus died on the cross, rose again, and then went back to heaven. And it's all the amazing stories of what his followers got up to in those days after. And today's story is about two of Jesus' followers who did a bit of singing, and something really amazing happened. You see, Paul and Silas had been going around telling people all about Jesus and all the amazing things that he can do in our lives. But a few people in the town, they weren't so fussed on this and they were getting very cross that they were telling people all about Jesus. And so they decided to arrest them and put them in prison. Now, if that was us, we'd be a little bit scared and a little bit worried. And I can't imagine what they would have felt. They would have felt a little bit uh, frightened. They wouldn't have known what to do, what was going to happen. But you know, in this story, they have a very unusual reaction and they do something a bit unexpected. And so we're going to have a recap of the story now where you can see what actually happened. And then afterwards, we're going to have a quiz. So you're going to need to pay attention to all the details in the story so that you'll be ready for the quiz afterwards. So I'm going to hand over to Rachel and she is going to give us our story on Paul and Silas. See you in a bit. Hello, boys and girls. Now today's story is about two friends. They're called Paul and Silas. It'd been a little while since Jesus had died and then come back to life again and gone to heaven. And now Paul and Silas, with some of the others, they were busy going around the town telling people all about Jesus. Hello, sushi man. Jesus loves you. He can change your life. Not, 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 not. Jesus has risen from the dead. They spent loads of time going around the town, but then one day, some people got very, very cross with them. And Paul and Silas got sent to prison. A prison guard came and took them to prison and off they went. They were taken to the deepest cell in the prison that was most secure. And Paul was put in the prison and Silas was put in the prison. And there were different other prisoners around and they had chains put right across them so that they couldn't escape. And the prison guard had locked the door so that nobody could escape. Now the sky was dark and it was very late. Listen to the clock now and see if you can work out what time it was. Did you listen? Did you count them? It was 12 bongs, so that means it was midnight. Paul and Silas were busy singing. They were singing praises to God, their favourite thing to do. Singing and singing away, and all the other prisoners could hear them in their other cells. Suddenly, the whole prison shook. The ground was shaking. It was a powerful earthquake. Oh my goodness. Paul, Paul. Paul, look, said Silas. The earthquake has shaken all the doors open. And Paul said, Silas, Silas, look. The earthquake has shaken off our chains. They were both free. So Paul and Silas 
and all the other prisoners in the prison were really happy. But the prison guard, was he was not happy. He was actually very worried. You see, if all the prisoners had escaped, then he was going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh no! Oh no! All the prisoners have escaped! Oh no! And then Paul called out to him, don't worry! Don't worry, prison guard, I'm still here. And Silas joined in, I'm still here too. All the prisoners were still there. The prison guard said, someone put the lights on. So someone put the lights on. Oh, he went up to Paul and Silas's prison cell. Paul and Silas, he said to them, I can see that you are God's friends. How can I be God's friend too? So Paul and Silas explained it to him. You just need to believe in Jesus, that Jesus died to take the punishment that you should have had for all the things you've done wrong, and God will forgive you. Yes, that's right, said Silas, and his Holy Spirit will come and live with you and help you every day. So the prison guard decided to become a Christian, and in fact, so did his whole family. You see, the prison guard invited Paul and Silas back to his house. Well, thank you, prison guard, no problem. So Silas and Paul came to the prison guard's house. He sat down together with him and his whole family and ate food together. Mm. And his whole family decided to become Christians as well. The prison guard said, I am feeling very full. Are you feeling full up of bread? Said Paul. No, I am feeling full up of happiness, said the prison guard. Me and my whole family have become God's friends. Boys and girls, anyone can become God's friend, like the prison guard did and all of his family did. And if you haven't already decided to become God's friend, you can if you want to as well. You just have to ask, just like the prison guard did. So let's pray together. Jesus, thank you that you died to take the punishment that we should have had and we can be forgiven and we can become your friend. You can change our whole lives. Thank you that all we have to do is ask. And if you want to read all about this story about Paul and Silas, it's a real story and it's in the Bible and it's in the second half of your Bible in a book called Acts in the chapter, which is number 16. So have a look at it this week if you want to with some adult in your house. See you again soon, bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope you're paying attention because now I've got a couple of quiz questions for you to see if you can remember some of the details. The first one, it's nice and easy, we'll start you off, is what was the names of the two followers of Jesus that get arrested? So I'll give you a moment. You can shout it out, shout it at the screen. Of course it is, well done if you said Paul and Silas is the answer to this one. Question number two is this. What time did they start singing to God when the earthquake happened? Can you remember? That's right, if, well done if you said it was at midnight after the clock had bonged 12 times. That was how late it was, it was right in the middle of the night when everybody else was sleeping. That's amazing, isn't it? And question number three is, where did the prison guard take Paul and Silas after the earthquake? Can you remember? Well then, if you said they took him to his house, the prison guard took them both to meet his family and to tell all the other people in his family all about Jesus. Now, what I love about this story is that Paul and Silas probably felt a little bit worried and a little bit scared when they were in prison. But you know what they chose to do? Instead of panic and instead of complain, they chose to worship God and they chose to sing to him and to sing praise to him. And when they did that, God did an amazing miracle and set them free from the prison. Isn't that amazing? And not only that, but they were put in prison in the first place for telling people about Jesus. But then when they got freed, they were able to tell the prison guards about him and all of his family. And they got to tell so many more people about Jesus because of this amazing miracle. And what we can learn from this story is that sometimes when we feel a bit scared or worried, the last thing we want to do is pray or ask God, tell God how brilliant he is and how amazing things are. But actually, what we learn from Paul and Silas is when we choose to worship, 
when we choose to put God first and to thank him for how amazing he is, that God can do amazing things in our lives. And so we're going to explore that a little bit more in today's session. Have you ever watched a Wales rugby match when Wales are playing? We've been lucky enough to go to a few games, haven't we, Bath? We have, yeah. And the experience is always amazing. Now, it's really exciting to be part of it when all the fans are singing. My Himmelfen hat ein Abolimi. They're shouting, they're support, they're chanting. Wales, Wales, Wales. They're cheering, it's amazing. And when they're singing, they sing to show that they're Welsh, they're proud. Feed me till I want no more, want no more. They're part of the team and they're getting behind them and they want them to win. Feed me till I want no more. And in some games, there's been times where maybe Wales haven't been doing so well. Quite rare though. Very rare. Very rare. Um, and maybe they look like they might even lose. But, and the fans, you think, oh, maybe they'll think, oh, I won't bother singing so much then because they're not winning. It's not going the way I wanted to. But do they do that? No. No, of course not. They sing even louder. <laughs> and you know what? That can really change the atmosphere in the game when the fans start supporting them and, and that can really change things on the pitch. Yeah, and not always. Sometimes the game still doesn't go the way that we want and sometimes we don't win. But do you know what's amazing is that the fans are still behind the team and it changes the atmosphere for those who are playing. And when we sing to God, it's a bit like that too. Like when we choose to worship him, amazing things can happen. Yeah, we worship him to show him that we belong to him, uh, to tell him that he's amazing and to thank him as well for all the amazing things he's done for us. And it doesn't mean that our circumstances will always change when we worship, but what God does is he changes our heart and he helps us to know his love and to trust him, even when things don't look the way we would like them to look. And so we can know his love and his peace as we worship. And what I love about worship is that it doesn't just need to be singing. Now often we say in church that our worship is the time that we sing and that's what we do. And that's just one way we can worship God. But there's loads of other ways we can do it too. Like throughout our days, all the things that we do can be used as a way to worship God and to thank him for who he is. And this is a Bible verse that it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. It says this, Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. So this verse shows us that we can use whatever we find ourselves doing as a way to worship God. And that might be all the things that you love doing. Perhaps you really don't like singing. Perhaps that's not your thing at all. Like it's very much mine, but maybe it's not yours. And that's okay. Because there's loads of different ways that you can show God how thankful you are to him. Perhaps you like drawing and you like to do art instead. And you can express yourself that way. Or maybe you like writing things down or writing stories or writing poems. And you can do all those things to show God how amazing he is. But not only that, the way that we, like it says in this verse, the way that we are in our lives, the, our words and our actions, all of these can be used to worship God. So my challenge for you is this, this week, how can you worship God where you find yourself? And sometimes maybe you'll find yourself feeling a little bit worried or a little bit nervous. Perhaps you're back in school and it's a little bit strange and confusing. But you know, when we choose to worship God, he can change our hearts and he changes the atmosphere around us and helps us to see that God is in control and we can trust him because he loves us so much. And so if you find yourself feeling a little bit worried, why don't you find something to thank God for, find something to worship him for, and as you do, allow him to help you and to guide you as, and fill you with his love, which is amazing, isn't it? So shall we pray? We'll thank God for all the amazing things he does and the miracles in this story. And then we'll, we'll come to a close for today. So let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you that you are amazing, that you are completely brilliant and you love us so much. And God, we thank you for all the amazing things that you have done for us and that you continue to do for us. Thank you that we can trust you and that we can worship and it'll help change our hearts and change the atmosphere. So God, I pray you'd help us to worship you this week 
in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. Well, it was great to have you join us for Sunday School today. We really hope to see you again soon. And take care this week. See you again.